All right, here we go. Must be Tuesday. We're in the room. Yes, it is. An afternoon, so we'll see how sharp we are today. I'm not sharp right now. I, yes, you are. I'm, I'm having a tough time with this one because I have so much on my mind. This is, but I love the podcast at the end because I feel good coming out, but coming in right now, I'm not going to lie to the listeners. I'm, I'm a little, feeling a little overwhelmed right now. That's all right. Well, on your best day, you are still way better. No, I'll push through it. I'll push through majority. it. And I know this is, uh, this is very therapeutic for me, but, uh, it's also raw too, right? I mean, we have shitty days. I mean, it's you know, not, it's, it's actually like challenging. It's days. been a heavy, really heavy day. Yeah. Um, so, but it is what it is. We've made a commitment to this, which I I love. And off off to a good start, too. I mean, I I do enjoy starting our podcast with some things that we've done recently. So obviously, we were at Junior Achievement together today, which is always, uh, you know, a a great group of people with, I think, a a, a great cause and are getting it right a lot. You know, we've both sat on lots of different nonprofits and some of them show up as nonprofits exclusively. And that has one look versus an organization that happens to be a nonprofit that's really hit on something that's a value, whether that's career readiness or, or workforce. The career readiness seems to be a word that's taking over in favor of workforce development or something like that, this career readiness idea. So I enjoy those conversations. And, and Maryland obviously has a very big push around education and a, and a different type of delivery in education. And we have a new governor who's going to do it a little bit differently than the old governor. So I always, I always enjoy... Um, the catch ups with that group because it's a, a really bright group of people in on the board of directors led by a really good um, staff at Junior Achievement. Mm-hmm. So I do. Um, but it's, you know, for for me personally, it's I, I want to I want to engage a little bit more than I was able to today. Just when work's really uh, a lot going on, that's that's got my focus. So while I agree, it, it was it, it's been hard, um, like recently to just engage in the way that I want. Yeah, I think that's part of the balance thing that we, uh, you know, as entrepreneurs is hard. I mean, there's a lot of demand of your time, whether that's internal, but then also the external components and things that we absolutely love to do and things we love to engage in, you know, kids, Mm -hmm. which is junior achievements mission. Um, You know, you're you're in and around uh, ABC, which is construction side and me with MEP, which is manufacturing side. But sometimes that balance becomes really difficult. And man, as much as you'd love to just have infinite time to, to spend everywhere and engage in everything. It's just not possible. It's, it's, it's challenging. And it, and it, uh, I think it wears on you at times just because neither of us can tolerate doing anything, even seven eighths of the way, let alone anything that feels like halfway or a third of the way, even on a particular day, it's, uh, it's challenging. So I, I, I feel you. I completely understand. Yeah. And the company has got to be the most important thing at all times. I mean, it, ju- it just does. I, and I, this was actually one of my tips for entrepreneurs or young business owners it's like year one through five I would advise don't not not because you're not charitable or giving but like don't even think about getting involved with nonprofits and all this if your business is sustainable and profitable in the end and gives you that opportunity do it when you can but to do it in year one through five is it's it's really unreasonable and uh, take care of your business like that at the end of the day taking care of your business is going to allow for all those other opportunities and uh, that's what I'm feeling right now I'm feeling like I've got to just take care of the business not that putting anything to the side but right now realizing this is the priority and can get back to everything else once this gets back in line yeah and I I remember going through some really difficult years uh, earlier in my career and I would actually say in Internally and even externally, hey, look, right now, my favorite charity is me. And I wasn't being an asshole. I was being very serious that as it related to time resources and financial resources, there were none to spare. Mm-hmm. Believe me, if I had them to spare, I would spare them and, and try to do as much as humanly possible now with both time and financial resources. But you're right, in those early years, um, you know, don't kid yourself, any one of those those resources that you're giving somewhere else, it's taking from the, the business and at that time. It always is, but when you have a small smaller team or um, you're newer, you just have less, less, you know, of that to spread around. And Mm -hmm. a lot of it falls on you for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I will tell you one more too. um, And I'll just give a quick shout out. I had a really interesting meeting today with a group in Baltimore called Next One Up. And they are, they've engaged, it's uh, males, um, 
seventh grade to 12th grade, generally in Baltimore city. And they are creating a place for them to go and thrive and learn. And they just, uh, you know, shout out to Matt Hanna, who just secured what they call base camp, which is up in North Baltimore. It's a 14,000 square foot facility that has, um, 3d printing and a tech side, a great gym that they work out in together. And he's established a, uh, an expectation and a cadence around being worthy of being in this place, you know, having to show up and how you show up. It's really impressive. I, I, uh, I look forward to engaging more with them in that group. There's about a hundred young men between seventh and 12th grade in there at any given time. And is that after school? It's after school and weekends and holidays. So yeah, we should, uh, we should do some integration with Salvation Army on this because we've got the big uh, multi-million dollar project we're working on um, with just this. It's a, with Boys and Girls Club and it's a performing arts center. It's with a Peabody. It, um, it's going to be science. I mean, it's, we're going to be trying and put everything under one hub. Basically, we're repositioning a, an old school and it's the same mission. Yeah. So that, that's, um, we, sh- we should definitely be doing some integrating there. Yeah, we're, we're running parallel. Yeah, there's some alliances. There's some yeah. JA alliances too, just type of talking about that. There's some alliances. I think that, that space is, can be challenging at times just in not fragmenting all the resources where you end up doing exactly that, you know, running parallel and then some of that really critical power transmission gets slips, you know, mm-hmm. where there's all this great horsepower and it just doesn't get transferred because it's diluted in spots or one step that would be even worse was if there was competition for resources among those groups, then it gets really, really messy. But that was a really, really great experience. Mm-hmm. And I met, uh, I met Matt, I didn't realize it seven years ago, we were at a manufacturing event and he said, you know, I remember meeting you and I was hoping for this big pull through. You were one of the few that stayed in touch. And he said, you know, as much as I wanted to engage, we just weren't there yet. We didn't have the time resources. We didn't have our act together. We didn't have a space like this. And he said, I'm glad we reconnected today because we're ready now. So he's in a really, really good spot. So, yeah, I, I think this is um, a good segue into topic of conversation about, you know, we were, we were digging into the idea of, of, of happiness and what, what it means, is it sustainable, what it means to us, are we happy, you know, every, everything about how we define it um, and find it or pursue it or chase it, it, is it a destination, is it an outcome, like just, just the overall topic and I think the most important thing for me and one reason I do want to be a part of these nonprofits and um, other, other community acts, even when I'm feeling overwhelmed with my you know, with work and everything else is for that piece of, of purpose and, and meaning and being, you know, part of a bigger cause and impact. And I think when I'm looking at um, happiness, I think at the root, at least for me, I I am able to, I'm generally ve- like a very happy person. I always have been. Um, and maybe that's some genetic component and, and luck in that regard. But I think when I strip it all down, I'm most happy when I've got a lot of purpose and meaning and different like imp- uh, missions in my life, which is what I feel like these nonprofits and, and work and all everything I touch really has some kind of deeper meaning for me. Um, and that really provides me with uh, a sustainable happiness, I think. And happiness, maybe the right word is joy. Um, I, I'm not sure, and I'm not really sure what the, how they would be defined in a dictionary. Um, but Purpose is very, and like that mission is very important. I I feel like to remain happy, I have to be driving towards something. And I'm not saying I can't find pleasure in things that really have no meaning per se or that are just for fun, but it's fleeting for mm-hmm. me. Like that, it's, it's, it's pleasure for a, f- a fleeting day or moment in time where that sustainable like happiness comes from a, a bigger purpose. How do you feel about that? Do you feel the same? Yeah, I, I do. And we've, you know, we've talked a number of times about, you know, how, what do you do? You know, how do you, how do you, some of the reinventions that happen along the way, you know, you have to be able to do that and you have to be able to, I don't know that I would be able to be happy just on the same exact linear path. You know, there's got to be some, some different, um, some different entries and some different experiences. And, and all of those for me are generally learning opportunities. It would, it would be about learning something and then trying to figure out what to do with my new knowledge, um, 
even if I even if I then turn that into some type of a, a, a superpower along the way, it's like, huh, wow, I didn't know that. And then I really invested in it. But yeah, I think that that happiness piece like you hit on, um, you know, j- uh, you know, pleasure, which to me would have a very short term feel mm-hmm. to it. That would have a very short duration. And I think, you know, knowing you as well as I do, uh, a lot of your happiness too comes from your perspective, right? It, we talk about being grateful a lot and, and uh, grateful and gracious and everything that's that's in and around that word. But knowing you as well as I do, it's that that perspective piece where you look at it and think, "Wow, I have it. I have it great." What a what an asshole I would be mm-hmm. to ever show up cranky mm-hmm. or grumpy mm-hmm. or because that would be that would be attempting to waste my shot in some fashion. So that's that's how I think about it. And then try it just like, all right, just stop, mm-hmm. you know, just just stop it. You know, whatever you're doing in this little minute, Mick, just get the hell out of it and get back onto what you were doing. For me, I say it all the time, go make a sales call. Mm-hmm. And I love seeing our customers. And I love solving problems. And that's a pretty quick about face for me if I get into a moment or I feel like I would never say my happiness is in jeopardy, but sure as hell there are moments where you're like, man, I'm just, I'm just not gelling today or, or uh, the rut. We talk about the rut, but I mean, happiness for me, I mean, I, I love the people here. I love the people that I'm around, whether it's going to meet uh, uh, the Matt Hannas of the world or sitting in a room of, with junior achievement and they're bored and, and working on that, that's all part and parcel or add on or additive to, to being happy and, and, um, and and feeling fulfilled is another word for me. That's really important. I'm going to bring it. I I was going somewhere else with this. I'm going to bring it back because it's probably the most important thing I want to hit on, but, um, you, this is a nice segue to what you just said in that happiness. I'm, the, the theory is, um, and this is a theory that, you know, we were talking about the Arthur Brooks new book. I'm, I'm currently in the middle of Strength to Strength, his book, which I, I really like. I'm only halfway through. Um, but one of the ideas that real happiness cannot happen alone. And um, there are some exceptions. Like for me, I do get genuine happiness when I have 90 minutes to just like run or and 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 he even says that one of his podcasts like, okay, if you go on a hike in nature for 90 minutes, you're really happy. Like maybe that's the exception. But for the most part, like if you're doing a lot of things alone, you're not going to be happy. And he goes into even deeper about like that's when addictions start and you start doing things alone, like it's pleasurable for fleeting, pleasurable for fleeting moment. Um in this idea of not being able to be happy when you're doing things in solitude is interesting to me. And I do think about with the rare exceptions of the exercise and the hikes, you know, but generally speaking, I agree with that notion because as I said, I get so much joy and happiness out of um, a purpose a bit. And, And that purpose is always collaborative in nature um a lot of it has to do with some kind of give i hate like giving back but you know some kind of it impacts other people like if it were just me getting this joy and happiness i would be very not happy because it has to have some kind of impact that i'm seeing with other people around me i want to collaborate on the front end and i want to see that the the impact on the back end with other people. So doing things alone, I agree. I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure I can think of anything except for the rare exceptions we touched on that I would be super happy if there weren't other relationships involved. And I think those relationships that we carry and have, and maybe the strength of those relationships is really dictates our happiness levels. Yeah. I mean, yes, and I can. I'm sitting over here thinking of uh, many, many different examples of that. Right, go back to teams. You know, team sports. The idea of, and even if it's an individual, you know, we talk about Tommy and and his his swimming career. Even though that would have me with golf, even those those would have individual type feels in the moment. You're still part of a team, right? You're still swimming uh, a particular event as part of the overall team, whether you're accumulating points or whatever that team feel is. But then take it to the next level where it's soccer, where you are truly receiving the ball from a teammate and you're working together. We just recently watched the uh, Netflix show that goes back and looks at University of Florida, uh, Kings of the Swamp, I think it's called, back in the 05 to 09 seasons. And you look at what they did together, 
grueling, grueling work, but man, they were happy as hell. Like they were, they were all about it. And I imagine they were as happy and fulfilled as they ever were at any point in their lives. Maybe now too, but, but throw in some family, right? A lot of those events that you talk about that make people happier, you know, mix a lot happier because he's, uh, you know, he's out with his daughters or he's out with Brit and the girls or something along those lines. For me, most of those happy moments are never sitting by yourself. They're right? shared experiences. Yeah, they're, they're shared. And even, even the shitty ones, right? I mean, hell, I used to run through the city of Baltimore doing boot camp with a crew and it was grueling, but we were happy as hell together, you know, just because we were experiencing mm-hmm. the grueling, whether we were high-fiving it out, doing a one-arm push-up or something stupid, we were tighter and much tighter um, just because we had gone through that experience together. I think you can pick any of them, but without question, all of the best experiences involve other people, one to a thousand and one or whatever that is. Um, yeah, there's a, for, that's the only way it would ever be. I, I am not an introvert. Clearly, I wouldn't have to pass. I wouldn't have to take a test for two seconds. I'm like, get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're not an introvert but or I, anything I, that I even looks like an introvert. I don't even think, I think even for introverts, it's, it's the same. I mean, I... And e- even when we're talking about a solo sport or a solo entrepreneur that has a, a business and it's just them, I mean, you're still working with customers or oh. vendors oh, yeah. or um, in, Pro- you're practicing in team environments or you're you're inspiring other people or your network. There's just it's just a collaborative environment. I think it's and so I, I really think there's something to that. And as we're trying to navigate and figure out how we can all be happy, I mean, really, we're all, we're all searching for that in our lives. I think that's one thing to really take a look at, particularly if you're not happy, is maybe the relationships in your life and how strong they are. Or do you have just a few, which I believe is all you need, of really deep connections? Like, I just, I just think that's so important. The next thing, um, which I was going to touch on, which I'm bringing back, and you just got into a little bit as you were talking about uh, the, the football team. Was it Su- King of Swamps? It was, it was not King of Swamps. It was yeah, I think Swamp. it was King of, the, King of the Swamp. Kings of the Swamp. Oh, I something like that. Yeah. Either way, um, that the idea for me is probably a good reminder for people is when you're going through the challenges and you're having a heavy day, you're having a hard day, you're going through the challenges, like I, I don't, I personally don't believe there is joy or happiness without the, that without the other side of it. Hey, how how would you even know? Where's your comparative? Where's your comparison? How would you even know? How would you even be able to tell? But also, like that reward. I that's why in the other episode we talked about how much we value hard work. For me, without the hard work, with the challenge, uh, the real challenge, like the the grueling effort, um, the demands the outcome on the other end just isn't as sweet. It's not as joyful. It doesn't bring me as much happiness if I don't go through all the challenges to get there. So when you're having those hard moments and you're having those tough days, I think it's so important to remember this is part of the bigger thing of happiness. It's good. Like I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself right now. I'm like, yeah, I'm like I'm, pumping myself I'm up. Sitting over here listening to you, which is why I love these podcasts because yep. I'm, I'm, I'm literally saying this to myself. Like, while you had very hard conversations today, which were also great for me, like very hard conversations with, which most people would call very prominent people, um, and just had to be very direct and have these hard conversations. It also made me better. It made me a better communicator. It made me so much better on the other end, just just for being able to have the hard conversation. So. Uh, the, the diametrically opposed, I think, are very important to ultimately be happy, um, which I, I, I bring myself back. It, like, like today I can look at it and say, this is good. This is really good because if nothing else, I'm going to grow. And, and that makes me pretty happy. <laughs> yeah. And if it's funny, we talk about that. I mean, that's uh, yeah. so back to a quick entrepreneur moment, having hard conversations um, is, is an, is an art form. Right. And, and I think even leading up to that, getting yourself positioned or being willing to have hard conversations is really difficult. You know, there's any number of people that I watch and, and I, I'm not, I'm not broad brushing here, but salespeople I have encountered inside of our organization and outside of our organization. They are great when things are great, but man, all of a sudden when something goes a little crooked, that delivery didn't happen, that customer's pissed about that price or whatever those things, next thing you know, they're gone. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, my father would call him good time, Charlie, you know, things are, when things are great, Charlie's around 
around, but the second they have anything that looks like difficulty to them, nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. And that's a, uh, so entrepreneurs listening, learn to have hard conversations and embrace them, prepare for them, show up for them, be honest. Um, you'd be shocked by how it will be received on the other side. And if you go through that with, I think your, uh, your situation today was with a, a partner, a customer partner supplier relationship. You go through that with them, just like doing that one arm push up out in the rain. You hit, there is a, a bonding experience that happens as, as a maybe, maybe not, as I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be a bonding experience, but we'll see how it all shakes out. But they know where you stand, yeah. right? They know where you stand and, and they know who you are and, and they know they're going to get it straight. And I found that people, even though they may not love the information, they prefer it over a surprise or anything that looks like a lie 100% of the time. So anyway, back to that. Um, so yeah, we were talking about, about having hard well, conversations. One thing I, I do just want to, and that, that this conversation with, and this isn't about happiness, but about just, just something, what our podcast is about as, is business and as an owner, or, or it doesn't have to be an owner. It could be even someone in, in executive positions where these are the moments, like for me, I had to decide, like, was this something I was going to, b big deal, you know? And, and again, it, it'll, it's going to all work out. It's going to be fine. But big deal in the moment, what I was going through, is this something I bring to my team and let them in and fight the battle with me? And this is one I decided not to. So uh, I, I like they are so busy. They have so many other things to worry about. They don't need to carry that. And it's, and that's probably why sometimes it feels more overwhelming because you're shouldering it yourself, but it's the right decision. Like sometimes you just, as that leader, you've got to fight these battles yourself and shield your team from it. And it, it's not, it's not not being transparent. It's making a b business decision that's best for everybody in the moment. Mm -hmm. They've all got their, their own, their own workloads that are super heavy that they need to focus on. And I know that. Yeah. So, You've got to you've got to make those decisions in the moment, real time. And there will be a time probably where I'll bring it to them. And but it's probably going to be when I'm on the other end and there's an outcome. Yeah. Um, so and those are those are hard because, like I said, you want to be very honest with your team and you don't want anybody to think, especially like my VP, that I didn't come to him with this. It's like. I'm respecting their workload now. And I know that this is a conversation I need to handle. At the end of the day, I'm making the decision. And um, it, it's just one of those those battles to fight by myself. Yep. You know, and sometimes you just got to make those decisions. But that's it's hard. And it makes it even uh, a little bit more overwhelming, I think, when... You know, as we're talking, you're not collaborating on it. It's like you're 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 a you're a one man army. Yeah. Well, listen, there are times where you know um, that efficacy also has to be it has to be um, accompanied with speed, right? And you just you don't have time. And and listen, businesses like ours, and and maybe in general, I don't know how all of the businesses work, but I can tell you that businesses like ours are not democracies. Ultimately, they are benevolent dictatorships because if the ship goes down, you're homeless or I'm homeless, mm -hmm. right? So when it comes down to it, they're, they're, bene they're benevolent dictatorships. You certainly want as much input, but when you get to moments like that and it's got to go, right? The shit's about to hit the fan and you got to make sure that, that, you know, it doesn't get on everybody else in the organization. Those are the choices that you make and that's, those are appropriate. And, and yeah, you grow and you can always double back and there's a learning experience and you can share it with them after the fact or not. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's some things that I do or some calls that I make and it's not in the interest of being opaque. There's nothing about it. It's, you know what? At some point that'll come up when appropriate. I'll tell them about the time when, but I'm not going back in now, especially if I feel like it would rattle anyone's confidence or there anything either that had a look what I did moment to it. I absolutely won't share in that moment if it is anything that feels or sounds like that, then I won't at all. I'll yeah. And to your point, I mean, it was a call out of the blue. It's not like I had time to say, oh, come on, come on, team and collaborate with me. But you, it, it had to be handled real yeah. time. Who's online too? Oh, shit. Yeah. And I, you know, you're just caught off guard and you handle it. Um, and it's always for the betterment of the team and the company. And so that's, that's always the priority. And, and if your team knows that, I mean, it's not, it's not a hard conversation to have after the fact, if you do have it to say, I just handled this, sh this shit right now. So let me ask you this. So a day like today, one of the tougher ones, right? I mean, is this one of those moments where you say, you know, you, you have to, you, you don't even know what the happiness looks like if you don't have some, some pretty tough days where, you know, I mean, you'll have, will tomorrow inevitably be better just by the fact of how tough today was? Yes. And I, I will say, um, even today on a tough day, I'm still genuinely really happy. Um, and I think 
the one thing I guess that will come to mind is we always talk about pressure as a privilege. And so when I have these two people on the line that are calling me, right? I, not that I'm like, oh, I feel important because these two people call me. <laughs> yeah, you'd be okay but it does. That call but today. but I would have. <laughs> but it does remind me, like, you, you are highly regarded by these people who are making really big decisions uh, in a lot of ways and far beyond just here in our city. So. I think that it, it puts into perspective, like you've worked your way into a position where your voice is regarded and respected. And even though it was a tough conversation, you were part of the conversation. You're in the middle of the conversation. So I still think I'm able to put it into perspective. I'm not I'm not joyful today, but putting it into perspective, I'm, I'm still happy and I'm still, um, I, you know, when you when you do feel value that that helps the happiness level too. going back to the, the purpose, the mission, the value, respect, like those are all really things that are, are so important to me. And when I wake up and I, f- I feel like I'm giving that and I'm receiving that, I'm, I'm happy, you know, and I'm able to stay positive, which that's another thing, another another topic of positivity, which I think we could roll into as well. Mm-hmm. But so, yeah, I'm, I'm able, the answer to your question is yes. Like, I think tomorrow will be easier, but I'm still able to shift my mindset and, and, and be happy today and right. real, realize, yeah. put it to perspective. I wouldn't even say, yeah, I think that that happiness is a much longer duration feeling too, right? That's, that's. That's ingrained, right? You might, you might, uh, you might not be. Uh, I, again, I can't use the word happy to describe the word happy, but you know, it, you might, you might be a little, you might not be as as bubbly and effervescent as you are today. But yeah. man, that had no effect on Brit Arnold's happiness, right? You're still the same person you were yesterday before this stuff bubbled up or, yeah. or, or whatever the situation was. It, but and, no effect on your happiness, right? Yeah, I think is our. And I'm going to butcher this, but something like Arthur Brooks was saying is, I don't think happiness is is a thing. Like you're not happy. Um, it's not like a, a state or, or even an out. I, I think it's different like stages or I'm not sure how he p- puts it, but it's not, it's not actually like a state of being like you shouldn't actually describe yourself as happy. Right. Uh, you, you experience happiness in, and I guess some people experience it more than others. I, I again, I'm butchering that, but, um, it, it makes sense to me to not define yourself as I'm just this happy I'm just happy right. like it's not how it works <laughs> right no no that would be great but no it does not work that way but I will as as a as a side note on positive uh, like I have just had this positive outlook my entire life even since I was younger and my parents can tell you like I've always been able to turn things up positive and maybe that's just my the upbringing mm-hmm. um and seeing my positive uh, my parents that are positive but that's that is also a real key in happiness when you can shift that mindset like today that allows me to i see the positive in it i'm able to dis- um distract distract not distract uh d- detract detract yes. um the the good the silver lining out of things and i just i can always do that i even in maybe not necessarily in the moment but pretty quickly after um, and, and I don't know exactly where that comes from, but maybe it is just from going through so many failures and being in so many challenging positions and then also seeing the growth that comes out of that. And in the end, the, 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 the outcome, it's just like anything else when you practice something and you go through it and you're like, yeah, I've been here. I've been through this dress rehearsal and you know where you're going to get on the other end, even when you're in the hard times, like it allows me to always remain very positive. And that is has to be a con has to be a contributor towards long-term happiness i would think yeah i think it is yeah I, yeah it, absolutely i love the positivity piece because I, I i think i think i think positive and positivity are a choice too i i you know there's lots of days when you're in business and, and whatever you're doing right i mean you lose your you're uh, you, you know you, you have a winless season pick one of those right imagine that uh, there's any number of football teams recently that were 0 and 15 and 0 and 16 still at that working their ass off still still trying to pep their you know their 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 teammates up in the locker room, whatever that looks like. I think that positivity component is a choice too. And I don't know 
what it would be about certain people on the planet that that just don't choose it. You know, you run across someone that's just a, a shit on a particular day, right? They're they're just a shit, or I mean, in general, or, all or, the time. or yeah, or yeah, or yeah, you know, yeah, yes, or a constant shit. And you just think, yeah, like, why? Well, it that, seems that's, hard. That's hard. It seems really hard. It's really hard, especially. And I would just love to know, you know, if you or I come bouncing by, as we typically would, mm-hmm. come bouncing by, yeah, yeah. right? I'm just because I just, you know, I, whatever kick the door on the way out and my toe hurts like hell, but I decided like, okay, am I kicking your door? Um, I, and I'm, and I'm, I'm pissed, but I walk through the door. I'm like, well, that's over. Uh, I'd be curious to know what that feels like for someone that can be around happy people and just like, yep, nope, don't want any parts of it. And I'm going to stay over here and be up about an effing grouch. And mm-hmm. that's the way it's going down today. I don't know. It's just so foreign to me. I don't even don't even know what to do. And, and I, I at least can say, I know your organization, our organization, it sticks out so much here. You know, if we were to, if we were to let a grump into our, one of our teams, the rest of the people would be like, Hey, what's up with a grump? What's mm-hmm. up with a grumpy person? Did they fake it through the interview process? Were they, were they happy long enough to get the job? And now all of a sudden they've turned into a grump. Um, uh, or, the other side of that could be: Do we need to? Uh, do we need to see if we can help them? That could be the other part too, which would be fine, and that would be reasonable also. But man, in general, most people around here are pretty grateful, pretty excited about the opportunities that they have, and and all the good things that are going on in their life. And I think make a conscious choice to focus on that above anything else. Mm-hmm. Not that everybody doesn't have challenges and and some 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 tough things to deal with or go through, but I think it's part of that is what you choose to focus on and what you, what you let drive you that versus the other part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And certainly there's, I mean, we are very high energy and b- bubbly, um, but th- th- there's a difference between, you know, you, you don't have to be super outgoing and bubbly and high energy to be very positive mm-hmm. and very happy. Oh, and, yeah. you know, so it, it's making sure you're seeing the person as they are. And, um, you know, so someone could be, super quiet and not say a lot, but one of the the happiest, most gracious people. So um, I, I, I don't know. I just just worth mentioning because we're talking about how, how we're jumping around, bouncing around all day, which we are. Oh, yeah. But there's all, people uh, show their happiness and um, all, all different ways. Like they, well, I could give you a counter. So a counterpoint to that, um, an individual, I, I know I've said this before, but you know, we have this, this seven values we've identified. And one of the things we do in a number of different meeting formats is called people exhibiting the values, right? It's, it's doing what we value around here when no one's looking. And we actually take time to call it out. And our director of engineering is that exact person you're speaking of. Um, incredibly effective, positive, great leader, but by no means would you ever mistake him for a comedian, right? Mm-hmm. Or anyone bouncing through, uh, you would not be mistaken for Tigger from Winnie the Pooh, mm-hmm. bouncing through the office or anything of the sort, but incredibly positive. And when he actually, it might even have the opposite effect. When he speaks, you are going to mm-hmm. listen because he's not, he's not with a ton of words all the time, but when he has something to say, he absolutely pulls you in physically into whatever it is he's about to say. It's a really interesting way that he shows up and and what the outcome of that particular mode is and and uh, his persona. Mm-hmm. So, what would you say would if you're talking about sustainable happiness? As we're saying, this is this is a this is not a I am happy. It's I experience happiness often and hopefully for the rest of my life. Um, how would you, how do you see that? How do you see yourself achieving that? Um, and maybe it's not something you've you've necessarily have to work at. Maybe some other people have to work harder than others. Um, but for me, I think being really conscious and intentional is important um, because, as you were talking about, is you know finding the silver lining in things, being able to re- put things into perspective, and and realize that without the challenges, you don't necessarily have the joy on the other end. But I think that's being very conscious and aware and intentional. I think that's a really important part of happiness because if you can't do that, then I think it's going to be hard to find any type of sustainable happiness. What would you say would be the other the keys to being able to be happy for? generally speaking, for a lifetime. Having a wide range of missions, experiences, and and, uh, and interests that allowed me to meet a lot of different types of people. You know, when we travel, for example, my favorite thing about traveling 
is yes, seeing the places, which is great, but really it's about seeing the people. It's about seeing, you know, those animals in the, in their native habitats. And, and that's the people at the local bars or the people at the, whatever it is, whether it's in the stadium and we're watching the way the, those fans show up versus the way we know the fans in our particular area show up. So it's, it's about, uh, continuing to find and identify different pursuits that uh, that are interesting to me that will continue to uh, quench my thirst, my curiosity, what we talk about all the time. Some of those might lead into the ability to innovate. Others might just be the opportunity to learn and experience and observe. And I'm, I'm just as happy observing as I am actioning. You know, there are times when that learning, whether it's a skill or something that may be applicable here, um, then I'm going to go use it to directly innovate or create something new. But I'm also just as happy observing too and, and taking in the surroundings and watching the interactions. But but it's very people-based for me. I mean, it's not about, I'm sure I would enjoy the redwood sequoia trees or something about that. But man, if there weren't a bunch of people around to watch watching the sequoia trees, it wouldn't be nearly as fun for me. So that answer for me is simple. It would be continuing to identify pursuits, um, opportunities, learning, um, but there would have to be people around that, that are also doing it too because that's the most fascinating part is watching all the different mammals on this big rock. Yeah, and I think you touched on one piece super important is just that awareness, the self-awareness and identification of of what really does bring you joy and what really does bring you happiness and then being deliberate about creating those experiences and opportunities to um that, that play into, you know, what, what does make you happy. And I think part of the challenge, especially as um, in the strength to strength book is a really a, a good book that talks about those life transformation transformations. And as we evolve and it's embracing our different strengths and how they change and not holding on to things that once made us happy or our skill sets that once were our skill sets or superpowers, as you call them, which maybe aren't now like I'm I'm in my 30s now they might not be the same as when I was in my 20s and being able to let go and being okay with that but evolving and saying I still have a lot of purpose I still have a lot of skill I have wisdom I have knowledge now maybe I don't have that in innovation piece that I once had but now I'm wiser and just cr it's adapting and evolving and creating a life um, and not holding on to the things that you once were I think as we grow and, and get older is going to be very important to our happiness. And I say that because I definitely have a hard time uh, um, embracing, um, embracing change. Maybe, I, we all do. We're all humans and, and adapting. Um, I shouldn't say embracing change, but um, accepting the fact that I am getting older and I can't always rely on the things or maybe I don't love all the things that I once did. Um, so just being really self-aware and deliberate with the, the lives we create um, when, when we're identifying those things in ourselves. So the evolution is, is interesting and I think really important if we want to be happy for a lifetime. And that, that was really my question. If you're happy in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, I think it looks really different. And I think it takes a lot of deliberate, hard um, work and yeah. you know self-awareness and self-navigation. Well, I think you use the word evolution, which I love here, and I was going to use that too. I think you can invest in your evolution, right? I mean, there's this whole thing that's going on over 7 billion years being on this planet or whatever that is, where, you know, there there's that evolution, which is this incredibly slow, I mean, unrecognizable, right? You, you're not going to grow a third arm in front of me today, but it could be that if, you know, a couple billion years from now, if it determines, if it, if it turns out you're a better able to survive, you might have one, we'll never know. But I think in the in the moment and now, you can invest in your evolution by doing exactly what you're talking about, right? By being cognizant of where you are, what you're doing, what you've collected along the way, and how do you put that to use, right? I mean, how do I, I didn't have this stuff, you know, when I was, when I was in my early 20s, I just pick a sporting reference, right? I was fast, I was fast as hell, didn't see anything, right? I was running so damn fast, I actually didn't see the angles on the field or 
where the ball could come from and where I should be. I actually ran too damn fast. I was ahead of the play. Mm-hmm. If I had just seen it and chilled ass out, I'd have been in a position to score back post, right? We talk about in soccer all the time. I think you can invest in that evolution if you're incredibly aware of what you've collected to this point in your life. And then, all right, these are some great things. Like, sure, I've lost some stuff along the way. Jesus, who doesn't? But I have also collected through my experiences and, and what I've been able to learn and see, how do I deploy these to get where I want to go or or to, to do, and it wouldn't be conscious, right? You would just do that towards being happy because that would be a driver for you, right? Who doesn't want to be happy? I don't, unless you're just, I don't know, whatever. Um, who, who would sit there and say, God, you know what? I'm just not into that whole happiness thing. That sounds like a pain in the ass. Of course you want to be happy, but you know, what would you do subconsciously um, to, to, to invest in your evolution to just be on a trajectory that would keep you happy? By invest, what do you mean? Well, you, you made me think of that word invest just by talking about, um, um, uh, embracing the things that have changed about you along the way, right? You have lost some things and maybe some of that's good. Mm-hmm. You know, if you lost impulsiveness in your youth before you grew out the front of your brain, there's actually probably some things you've lost that are really helpful for being better going mm-hmm. forward. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily tag that word loss is necessarily a bad thing. You know, you've, you've evolved through that, whether it's an impulse or whatever, some of those, those, those mammal traits that you have early in life that may not serve you as well in certain spots. It's about understanding when they're not going to serve you and turning them off. Oh, this is not an impulse moment. Mm-hmm. Except when you were 23, you would you would have already done it. You wouldn't yeah. even thought about impulse. So I think it's more about being able to identify what that looked like and go, oh, that's one of those impulse things. No, not now. This is not an impulse moment. Chill ass out. But what you were telling me, what you said to me was, uh, you know, acknowledging some of the changes, right? Some of that evolution. And my add on to that was, well, hell, if you could acknowledge it, why wouldn't you continue to do and more of that in, and build on to it? Yeah, yeah. We talk about stacking things. That right. would be a stacking moment for me. And it, 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 we're actually talking about literally the investment and we're saying, okay, the things that the, the purpose and the collaboration with other people like we're de- we've identified what makes us what we, makes you and I happy so why not invest in you know those shared experiences travel culture being with great people like and get rid of the rest of the distractions, whether it's material things or, or anything else um, that that quite frankly is just just not part of that happiness trajectory or, or support system, you know, and, and that I, I think sometimes we layer way too much on, onto our plate and into our lives when we could cut so much of that bullshit out. And if we just really focus on, and it's not just, that there's so much more than happiness, but you know, we're saying the impact we make, the mission, the purpose, that's all plays a part into our happiness. So let's invest into that. And at the end of the day, that's going to be investing in our companies, in nonprofits, in cultural experiences, in travel, in shared experiences. So that investment piece, and it doesn't just have to be financially, it's time. time. It's, it's, I mean, maybe more so time than anything else, but identifying, being aware, and then investing in it and saying, okay, I, I know what makes me happy. Like, why am I dealing with everything else right here? Easier said than done. Mm-hmm. You know, p- p- people, social media drives people mad. It's, it's, it's pleasurable for a fleeting moment. And then you, you even get, you know, you have a, a down that's just like a stimulant. You get really high and then you crash. It's too much caffeine, too much alcohol, whatever yeah. that looks like. Well, social media is tapping the same, as Arthur Brooks talks about in, in this particular, his newest book, it actually taps the same pleasure receptors. The dopamine. That certain, yeah, that certain yeah, serotonin. drugs. Certain drugs tape. And, and, you know, we're a big fan on here talking about how we demonstrate what we do. Where were we on Sunday? What do we do Sunday? Yeah, uh, but baseball game with 75 people with, with our company that shared the shared experience. That's right. And we were all in the same place. Now, was I having a conversation with each individual? I wasn't. But I felt great that there were 74 other people, including you, that were around me that were enjoying, you know, one of our favorite teams, the Orioles. And they and, and, our, and then, then we put hats on them, right, that had our brands and our company names on them, which pulled everybody a little bit closer together, too, which is a very animalistic type thing. But, yeah, so that's exactly what we chose to do versus going and buying stuff or, you know, taking money out of the business to go do whatever the investment was back into being together in the same ballpark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, it's, it's that, it's the commitment to what, 
again, scrolling at the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't make me happy scrolling through my social media. So let me be very cognizant and deliberate and committed to my happiness. Like, and, and just get rid of those things out of our life. Again, it's so easy to say I'm guilty of, of all of it, just like everybody else. But, um, and, and the other thing too, talking about shared experiences, one thing I have to point out, cause we always laugh about it is when we're on, on the, um, recently we've been on the water on, on a boat and people tie up, right? Yes. You tie up on, yes. on a boat, but all these boats <laughs> come to this, one. this one area, this one little island, a very tiny little island. And, um, we, they call it an island. It's not, but, and this could be some boats tie up, but very rarely you see boats tied up together. So it's, it's just a group of single it's, boats. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a, a, an amalgamation of all these boats that are tied up in the same area, but nobody's talking to each other. You could be anywhere. We are in a vast body of water. You could be anywhere. You could tie up anywhere, wherever your boat wants to go tie up. There's plenty of plenty of plenty of water yet everyone goes to the same place nobody talks to each other but we just want to feel like we are part of a bigger group we do not i mean every time we've been out we have not had any communication with any other boats there yet we want to be close to all the other boats just, just to have that shared experience yep. and I, I think that's just a perfect example of what we're talking about so here's a question for you and and, and uh buyer beware we suck at this remember in uh let's see it was april of 2020, we were stuck at home, pandemic raging, and we were stuck on the couch. And we each made a bet on how long the pandemic was going to last. And what did I say? June 6th. Mm -hmm. So I, I had it lasting another two months in my mind. I think you went a little bit further. Maybe you went to July something. So I'm just saying we, we suck at this. How long does the attraction or allure of social media hang in there in this particular degree? Man, does, is it, is it, Tommy, is it, is it your group that gets sick of this and says enough of this crap? I'm tired of it. You know, this is my cell phone is a great tool for certain things about learning and venturing around the world to see pictures of Aztec pyramids. But for the rest of it, I'm done. What a crock of shit. And I understand how much harm it's doing me versus how much benefit. How long is that going to go on, I wonder? I don't know. I, I think you got to give people the personal freedom. Once you once you strip people of the freedom to choose, then, then we've got a problem on our hands. I was never suggesting we take it away. No, no I, I, I just I, I'm just making the, a point yeah. there. I, I I don't. I think it's you know on on an individual level. You back to our gotta, evolution topic. I, again, when do you look back and go, remember that was really a thing. You I can just, get so. I mean, social media can be so mission driven. You can get so much good out of it. So it's just the way. Just like everything else, for the most part, the way you yeah. leverage it. It's like a tool, right? If you if you use your hammer for the right thing, it's wonderful. If you smack your buddy with it, not so good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, now, one other thing, I mean, we, we haven't really touched on and, and, and really, maybe I shouldn't even go here, but, you know, I think there's also ways to boost your, your happiness and maybe it's like boost your mood. So, you know, you have, obviously you have, you have different ways, um, and tools that we develop and one of mine being exercise and, 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 and all these different, uh, you know, when I'm sweating and I'm breathing hard, like my mood is, is boosted. I feel happier. I feel kinder. I feel more myself. Do you think some of those tools and practicing them and developing them over the years is really, ha is, is really important to be able to be happy uh, for the generally speaking for perpetually forever. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is walk the building. You know, if, if, uh, if I'm back, you know, we literally are in the corner office. So, and it's away from the general travel, I will get up and walk the building, whether it's go down towards automation where we generally have a, a lot of younger teammates and I will just go seek people out. And, and, uh, you know, I know who the people in the organization are and, and I was, by the way, Everyone here, I mean, I'm, I'm never expecting anybody to be head down or, a, you know, a, a miserable turd. That's just, that's not a thing around here at all. But I will get up and go seek out that human interaction. And it's interesting at times where I'll recognize people were looking for the same thing. They just didn't know it. And I happened to get to them before they got to me. Mm -hmm. And so I will walk the building. And the number of people that I encounter, uh, Jordan in the back is one of my favorites. I mean, that guy is always ready to slap a smile on his face and high five it out and giggle about something. And, and it's the most refreshing and lightning thing. So, um, 
I, I don't, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to pull out the treadmill and knock out a couple few miles at your desk. But for me, a really simple one, get the hell up from my desk and go experience the really badass, cool, fun, positive people that we built inside of the organization because they all rally around the same seven values. That's why they're here. That's what attracted them. That's what attracted us back. And I just go do that. Yeah. And I, and I don't think we need to get into, you know, all, all the different things that people do because that's uh, a, a belabored topic at this point. Get sunlight, walk, run, sauna. Like we've heard it all so much. But but I think it goes back to that same concept of being very aware and very deliberate and very committed. Like there are certain things that are non-negotiables and I, I, I will not give the them up because when I do, I'm giving up on myself and my ability to show up a hundred percent. So it, it's finding what works for you and staying really dedicated to it. Because when you can do that, I, as we say, if you feel good and you feel like you, you look good and it's so much more than just aesthetics, like in the inside you feel, I mean, s- super simple, you feel good, you feel healthy it's really easy to be happier and kinder and just more productive and efficient and purpose driven. Um, and it, it just comes back to doing those things and staying really committed every day to those tools that allow you to feel like that while looking around for new tools, right? Cause, yes. cause you might, if you're too head down, you might actually miss an opportunity for something that you love and be an amazing thing to integrate. That's hyper complementary to what you're doing. So yes, doing that, but also too picking your head up, right? If you were, if you were, you know, the best assist person in the world, you'd have your head up looking for the next play or looking to dish the ball. That too is important. Well, it's just back to that whole evolution piece and, and our, the way we achieve happiness is, is going to be different throughout our lifetime. Yep. So just making sure we're, 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 we're always looking and aware. Um, and I, I don't think we have to say this again because we said it last episode, but uh, these are all things we're working through. And a lot of times we have these discussions when uh, maybe we're we're not demonstrating, demonstrating it well, or I really wanted to hold myself accountable to saying, okay, get out of this little funk, put into perspective, you know that the challenge makes the reward and the joy and the happiness so much better. Um, and so for me today, this was a, a little like pep talk for myself, yeah. um, given the day. And that's, that's why we do this, but it's not cause we have it figured out, but I, I do love the accountability of it. And it definitely helps me stay as true as I can to, um, to what we're talking about. Yeah, totally agree. Well, good for you. You strapped it on and you've had a rough day and, and, uh, Oh, and, and again, rough it rough is very relative. I get it. That's right. Privileged. <laughs> That's true, true. Look, first you're, world. I don't think rough. I don't think anybody's bawling for you on the other side of the telecast. Yeah, but I, if this is a, not a telecast, or I guess it is a telecast, right, Tommy? <laughs> it's got tele whatever. So uh, good for you. But I reckon that's that. You didn't have that's your cup today to cheers. What the heck? We're so far. I, I don't. I didn't have my cup. Playing. I just. This How's was that? just Does a race ass in here because <laughs> I have a quote due end of business today that right. I've got to get out. So well, good for you. We stayed on track. We uh, we demonstrated what we preach. I think demonstrated what we preach works here. We try, we tr- we try our best, and as I said, I I will, uh, I will call myself out, and I'm not going to say something on camera that I'm at least not trying my my best um, to to do. Well done. Because well, if we're not, we're, we're you can see right through it. Let's get back to being happy. And I know we will have to. I don't have to get back to it. <laughs> no. I don't have to get back to it. No, no, we were it's, happy. We've been happy the whole time. Yeah. So let's just continue to be happy. Continue to be happy. Bye.